Before I begin, I'd really like to thank you for seeing what I have to say. You don't even know how I feel when someone leaves a comment I'm hating on the game for no reason, and then a video where I literally give the devs excuses if I did shouldn't work on the thing I was complaining about. But it's all fine, because recently, Nefrot took a look at all my suggestions I've made over this and decided to implement... one. Once again confirming that they listen to me, and only me, as I can never be wrong, and I never was! So why don't we take a look at what they did this time, shall we? For the longest time, the settings were separated into two, one in the main menu and one when the game was paused. All settings were only available in the first one and a few were shared between both. Also, the full screen switch was a full screen dropdown with many different options in the main menu and to this day I have no idea what option will be selected if you toggled it. But after five years, the Soviet intellects at the North would finally figure out how to copy one of them and paste it to the other. Now you are free to change any settings while in-game, select if you like ketchup on your sandwich, or if you feel nostalgic, leave the game and open the exact same settings page right in the main menu. Wait, let me look at this again. Okay, so I started to realize this very small issue that keeps getting bigger and bigger with every update, but I don't see anyone actually talk about it, and I personally think that's a much bigger problem with Norfolk in general. So allow me to throw this metaphorical hat into the non-existent ring. Style is important, and I'm not only talking about how big you make certain attributes of a certain 3D model, but also about the user interface. UI gives it the ability to immerse the player before they even started playing, unless you just want to do the bare minimum and show a bunch of words on the left side and colors with a game developer. We know each other. So what does it look like in the secret laboratory? To make your own UI style, you just need to create a bunch of interactables that fit in the same theme and then reposition them on the screen to create different menus. If you feel like it, you can create variations of them for certain sections, but they still have to look like they fit in the same universe. With this knowledge, let's take a look at SL settings menu. On its own it looks fine, but in the context of the main menu, it makes no sense. Scrubbles have nothing in common, the toggles are completely different and tabs are now anchored to the center and keep the same distance between each other. Also, if you go to the audio tab and click on audio privacy settings, you'll see this pop-up that doesn't look like anything else in the entire game. From what I've managed to gather, the game has over six different UI styles. Main menu, in-game, 079 console, operation guide and debug, along with many others that will take forever to list. Now, some of them have the full right to exist. I mean, 079 is literally not computer, so it makes sense that the UI differs a little bit, and debug stuff... Well, it's debug stuff, who cares? But we still have a bunch of styles that are there for seemingly no reason. Why? Well, to explain that, we'll have to use this original copy of SP Secret Laboratory, version 1.0 from 29th of December 2017. Let's crack it open, shall we? Throughout the game, you can see this very characteristic visual style of not having anything. If we look past all the default Unity buttons, icons and splash screens, which is quite difficult to do, we will see that the game most of the time relied on the environment for its user interface. The main menu, doors, weapons... Most developers rely on cluttering your screen and forcing you into inescapable menus, while SL has shown over the years that it doesn't want to take control away from you, except when it does, and only wants to cover your screen when the alternative would seem jarring, except when it doesn't. As for the UI that is in the game, we will have to once again look past Unity's terrible outline component component, which is once again not that easy, and we will see this containment breach wannabe look that still has its own identity. But eventually they UI started feeling clunky. Nothing screens will come more than a black void in the center of your screen. So as the game received updates, so did the graphical interface. And honestly, the updates started embracing the minimal nature of SL even more. We have gone from having our entire screen taken up by three buttons, to this nice bar on the left that tries not to obstruct your vision. We removed default Unity buttons, to a limited extent, and slowly started replacing all the temporary elements with new icons and animations. And everyone lived happily ever after. Oh, I don't want to talk about this. Scopophobia was quite a controversial update. It was responsible for adding the stamina bar to the game and the infamous 096 rework that turned him from only being able to kill when someone looked at him to automatically killing people when not even being looked at when your dog decided to sit on your keyboard. And the other notable change was a complete overhaul of the main menu. Now, this isn't the first time the menu was updated. We've gone through the main menu, main menu 2, main menu remastered, and now we have the new main menu. Norfolk took the philosophy of the older versions and threw it out of the window with this thing. To this day, the menu remains quite a controversial topic, and I personally think it marked a new era for a cell, an era of new design choices, and a higher budget. Over the years, the begin was hard at work changing everything in the game right and left without any exceptions. Weapons, STPs, old systems that nobody cared about, and even the tutorial. 
sorry, I meant the operational guide. The feature that has been present in every game ever created and does nothing otherwise should be immediately reported to Norfolk Industries in Dimension and the IS-0. But with new features came new needs for UI. How can we signify that you can cancel grenades? Just throw this front on the screen, ka? How will we ask you if they want their voice recorded? Make this thing pop up. Is there a better way of showing alive players in the spectator? Create some complicated system that we can show to the Patreons to have the additional 7 quid for the Stop. Let's go back, shall we? On this own, these things don't look that bad, but when you add them up together, they start to feel a little bit... off. And that's because they've been added by the course of different updates, by different people that had different visions and different capabilities. But we can salvage this. It will only take a single person to make all of these things fit with each other, so we just need to instruct someone to do it. And maybe even create a document outlining the design of UI, its logic and layout. That conversation never took place at Norfolk. You might consider this point as nitpicking, but these things are slowly adding up, and steadily escaping the user interface boundaries. Just look at the not so recently added 939 room. On top of being the first special turn room, it's also the first one of its kind visually. Just look at those rounded edges, different color themes and cluttered tables. Compared to the rest of the map, it sticks out. I understand that the entire facility redesign is due, but for now it isn't redesigned yet. And once the 37.0 update comes, will you actually make this entire facility look like this, or will you do the same thing that's currently going on with UI, where every person that works on it can go willy-nilly and do whatever they feel like. I understand that Unity's UI system is hard to work with, but can you at least keep the slightly dark background in both server info and the new settings? Can't we at least have one thing that will stay consistent? Actually, there is a single piece of UI that has remained consistent over the years, and it's in a place that most will never access. And its name? The Remote Admin. Right after the game came out, Norfolk, or I guess only Hibbert at the time, added the Remote Admin to combat all the hackers that plagued the game in its early days. It was this dinky window for the moderation personnel of a given server that contained a list of all players and a bunch of menus for managing them. In its humble beginnings, the only fun thing you were able to do with it was to ban the server from itself. But today you are able to send custom messages, apply an operational guide robo effects, and play custom voice lines across the entire map. And in terms of UI, there's quite a lot of it. Many options have custom icons that all fit the same style, there are a lot of visualizations for different panels, and there's even a preferences menu where you can customize the array down to its entire color scheme and behavior. Don't get me wrong, I love this, but when you look at other aspects of the game, you start to wonder, why this? Out of all the things you can work on, why is some administration tool receiving the most attention? Actually, let's go back to the new main menu. Why did it even receive an update? Norvo isn't known for even remotely considering working on such features, and I don't want to label this venture as another fluke. I think there might have been another secret reason. Imagine, if you will, that you've been hired by Norfolk to work on their brand new game, SCP Secret Laboratory. Let's step into science fiction even more by giving you full free will on what to work on. What will you do? Will you add a new ability to your favorite SCP? Maybe you'll change the color of the D-class from ugly to red. Or maybe you will work on the one feature you've always dreamed of having, that always seemed out of reach. And that's the beauty of being a game developer. You can sometimes just slip an extra feature, steer the upper margin to focus on something a little bit different, or work to fix your very specific problem. So come on guys, bring your pitchforks and torches! Forget about all the things that has done for us with much benefit for themselves, time to harass them for being so self-centered! But the reality is, this is quite a normal behavior. As a developer, it makes sense to work on things that will help you as you're the one making the game. Some studios even have dedicated positions for people that will make tools that will never leave the boundaries of the office. My problem isn't with focusing on specific parts of the game. My problem is with how much focus they receive. Keep in mind I'm not trying to attack any individual people at Norfolk, and by the way, these things are illegal. User interface is plagued with unitium and inconsistencies. The Bible is the only place that supports keyboard navigation in the form of a single return button, but this is an icon from Xeo's free controller and keyboard prompts, while the rest of the game just has text. Audio sliders still do not allow you to mute guns, and the microphone dropdown keeps breaking every 5 seconds. Balance is more terrible than ever. Online 6 can subscribe to this YouTube channel and enable notifications, and there are these items that are completely useless because of how much we rely on speed these days, making tools even not overpowered but essential. There, that's my hot take. Can't wait to read 20 page essays and why the shy guy is underpowered. Or whatever other crap you come up with. The game still has a lot of glitches that haven't been fixed since Parabellum. Countless people complain about how horror seems almost diminished from this horror game, and what do you do? You overhaul the lighting system and make heavy seem like slightly above moderate weight zone because it creates new strategies. But did anyone actually ask for those strategies? This creates a lot of conversations about how Norfolk handles updates, bug reports, and their question verge of accepting user feedback, but all of these things will involve the word mismanagement that strictly falls into the politics category, and we never speak about politics on this channel. 
This is all you need to know. The remote admin got multiple updates because the devs frequently use it in development. The filmmaker mode was added because people have been bullying Norfolk for having horrible trailers, which still hasn't changed. The menu was reworked because the devs were a part of those people that cared about optimizing their menu time to squeeze that one extra nanosecond of spectating people during their sessions. Guns got overhauled because the devs liked playing competitive games. The operation guide was added because someone wanted to write SCP documents. Performance issues remain unfixed to this day because the developers have expensive computers and they do not see any point in further working on something that works good enough for them. I admire Norfolk's dedication to the game. I really do. But sometimes it feels like they've put their own whims in front of what players actually want. There are a lot of things I left out from this video. I didn't even talk about UI sound effects, this prompt that refuses to close when you press any mouse button, that leads to the main menu that won't respond when you press any keyboard button, or this small Overwatch menu that instead of reusing assets from the game, decided to create new ones probably out of spite. I would really like to see a change. And I'm not talking about another update, but in how the game is developed. Nerfwood's reputation isn't that great, and there are good reasons for it. But if you pretend that everything is fine, and then tell me and others to shut up when we try to criticize the game, then sorry mate, but you're doing more harm than you could ever do. So how about instead of this constant bickering, we could put our feedback to good use, and make a difference larger than a settings menu? Because the last thing I want from this game is to turn into something completely devoid of fun, of a cool looking administration window. But it would appear like our time has run out, as I now have to work on a very secret project that you can publicly view on my Twitch channel. I hope we'll see you next time. Well bye, stranger.